Hi, welcome to Moose Jaw This Week. I'm Lyle Johnson, your host, and we're down at the Yara Center today um, because it's, it's a health-related thing, it's a, a fitness-related thing. We're going to talk to Richard Dowson, who's uh, a researcher and an investigator into what he thinks he may have found a connection and uh, the uh, cause of multiple sclerosis. So, Richard, welcome to the show. Um, well, um, what I uh, came up with as a thesis, I'll tell you how I started. Maybe. Yeah, and let's just a little reference point about yourself. Oh. Uh, you were um, uh, you retired yeah. uh, principal from the Alberta school system. Right, yeah, from Northeastern Alberta. And I've always been curious and I enjoy research. Uh, I was the guy in university that when everybody else went for beer, I went to the library and did my oh, research. My <laughs> and I have a graduate degree from the University of Alberta as well, based on, on research, really. So I love doing research. I mostly spend my time with military research. People have seen your articles in uh, local mm -hmm. media about uh, people, most recently about people from Moose Jaw yep. who died in Moose Jaw related to the war. Yeah, yeah. For a while there, well, well, the old Times Herald was running. I ran a story a week in there of general interest. But in the background, I've been keen on trying to figure out the cause of multiple sclerosis. And uh, about six years ago, I'd called up to the MS clinic in Saskatoon and asked if anybody knew the cause. And there was a young guy I talked to, I never got his name, but he said he'd heard that it was caused by canine distemper virus. So that gave me a direction. And then I began to do a literature review, which you'd normally do on a graduate or doctoral study and uh, look at the literature about canine distemper, multiple sclerosis, and the causes. And the literature review I did for, uh, all over the world. So I did Canada, Europe, uh, Asia, Australia, South America, uh, everywhere really. And the fact that Canada, and Saskatchewan in particular, has such a high percentage of MS, is there much research about that? The, uh, there is quite a bit, and you're right about Alberta and Saskatchewan having the highest rates. I found uh, the best stats that I could find were regarding Alberta. And so I used a lot of information from Alberta, and I'm familiar with the, uh, with the geography. Um, there, there are uh, quite a few studies, but they tend to be very narrow. And uh, one of them is the assumption that um, MS is related to sunlight and the lack of vitamin D. And this just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. When you consider, for example, Alberta has 340 people per 100,000 with MS. And they get in the south, they get 332 days of sunlight a year. And, it, and the top one in Canada is us to Van Saskatchewan. That's right. You know, so maybe that's not the one. Yeah, well, no, that's right. And I, when I told, uh, I spoke with Dr. Levin, uh, the new research chair at the University of Saskatchewan, we talked a few weeks ago, and he was saying about, well, they thought that they should expand, you know, have satellite uh, places. And I, he thought of uh, Prince Albert, and I said, you know, you should have them in Estevan, Weyburn area because you'll find the rates higher there. As you go north in Alberta, the rate drops. Uh, but anyway, it's, it doesn't really hold water, mainly because in the Netherlands, they get 160 days of, of sunlight, mm -hmm. and they have- 160 days of rain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really a dreadful yeah. weather. And uh, they, have one of the, they have the lowest MS rate in all of Europe. And, uh, they have restrictions on owning a dog. You want to buy a, you want a dog, it, the licensing is about 200 bucks Canadian a year. So uh, anyway, I followed it around and, and it is not a lack of vitamin D. It's not genetic, as a lot of people say. Um, like one of the genetic ideas came from uh, Hutterite studies. And, they, and Hutterites have a very low rate of MS. And so I had, I looked at it and uh, or, uh, did some research with Hutterites. And Hutterites don't keep indoor pets. They don't keep indoor cats, they don't keep dogs. They do have a herding dog. And in the research I studied on Hutterites, 
is that some have developed MS, but there it was mostly males, and we find in the overall community, 2.4 women per one male develop MS. So my hunch is that the MS that did occur in the Hunterite community was as a result of the herd dog. Uh, but they don't, the herd dog doesn't come in the house. They just don't have that tradition. So you almost have to have a combination of having an indoor pet, which explains when you go north, it gets colder, people keep their pets indoor more. So like the, the uh, rate in Texas for MS is about 45 per 100,000. You get to Alberta and Saskatchewan, you're talking 330, 340. So people keep their dog inside. Now there's an anomaly and that when you do research, myself anyway, when I'm looking at research, I'm always looking at the weird stuff, the anomalies. And in Northern Alberta, the MS rate drops by 50%. And, the re and yet it's cold up there. And the reason for that, from what I know when I lived in Northern Alberta, is that Aboriginal people, <clears throat> excuse me, they don't have a tradition of keeping an indoor pet. Uh, they have dogs in that, but they're not indoor pets. And there's a higher percentage of Aboriginal people in Northern um, Alberta and Saskatchewan. And we, if you go further north into the Inuit community, the MS rate is exceptionally low. And they do have dogs, but they're, you know, they're not indoor pets. And I'm not losing you, am no. I? <laughs> I think the audience is going like, what the heck? Yeah, and they, they, it's because it's a totally different concept than what we've been pursuing up until now. Absolutely, and uh, nobody has ever done, they've never drawn the blood from, uh, from what I could find anyway. Nobody's analyzed the blood of people with MS to see if there was canine distemper ant uh, virus antigens in there. Um, but and just to finish off with the, the, the Sami in northern uh, Norway and Russia, now, they have a very low MS rate as well. And they do keep a dog, but it's a herding dog. Uh, well, that's, you know, we're just uh, we're going. So uh, now I, I was telling you that I have a sister-in-law who's been diagnosed with MS, and I'm going to check with her because you think it's in the juvenile years that this this uh, transition from, of one, from one uh, animal to the other person. Yeah, it seems, and based on uh, research that I found, uh, the researcher identified as the, the most uh, probable time of infection is during puberty. And that represented about 95, uh, well, about 91% of the cases. So in during puberty, people, the immune system is weaker, particularly with girls. Uh, so the immune system has to be weak, and there has to be the presence of a canine distemper virus, but that's the time of the infection. And the MS uh, in our society affects women more than men. Yeah, there's 2.4 uh, women per one man in Saskatchewan with the MS, so it's much higher, and, and I just assume that it's the stress of puberty for the girls that there makes them more susceptible. There's the other... It has to do, do with Saskatchewan winters that last forever. Well, yeah, and uh, if people have a pet dog, I mean, yeah. it's inside. Uh, Longer than... Yeah, it, yeah. if they're uh, pet owners, they want to keep them in. One other theory is that it's um, Epstein-Barr virus that causes it. But the stuff I've looked at, Epstein-Barr is related to lymphoma, and whereas canine distemper does the same thing as MS. It, it uh, attacks the uh, myelin in the, uh, uh, that, sur that surrounds the nervous system and destroys that, interrupting the, the flow of uh, nerves. So it's, it's really, really, I'm so absolutely convinced and my 156 page thesis uh, supports that and uh, I cite more than 100 articles and uh, did I mention to you about Asia has a low rate? No, you didn't. We're, I have to tell you, we're in our last three minutes oh, already. Oh, okay. But Asia, and because, again, Asians don't have... They don't, they tend not to have indoor pet dogs. And uh, the older generation is changing with younger, like in South Korea, for example. Young South Koreans, they, they're getting into the pet thing and keeping dogs. But generally speaking, uh, the Asians eat dogs. 
So it's not seen as a pet, but more as a food source and a delicacy. So uh, we, there's those changes as well. Uh, yeah, and in India, there is, uh, it's not that common except for one particular group, and it's a group that keeps dogs. They're very close to their pet. Well, and now where do we go from here in the last minute and a half? Uh, you know, what's going to happen? You, you've said you've contacted U of S and finally got some positive response. Yes, I did. It was really, you know, reassuring to talk to uh, Dr. Levin. He's a man that seems to be keen on listening to other ideas and anxious to solve the problem. And what's needed next, and he's started an initiative on this, is to draw blood samples and uh, check those. And if you can if they can find antigens to canine distemper virus in the blood samples, then it's home free. And though that's an area, I mean, of course, I couldn't do. But the, if I got one advice, one piece of advice is if you have a family pet, love your dog, they're terrific, uh, they're great to have, but take it to a vet and get it vaccinated for canine distemper. And and that's that's a good uh, point to end on here, Richard. But uh, thank you for bringing this information to us. It's a very interesting theory. I think people will go, oh, I never thought about it. And maybe they can relate that and uh, get a hold of you here, here in Moose Shaw. Yep. And if you're down at, at Yara every morning, uh, walk it here about 8.30 or so, we just track him down. He's got the poles on the yeah. track. He, go, he gives it. Yeah, the chubby old guy with the trekking poles on the track. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Lyle. Okay, thank you. And uh, when we come back, we'll uh, talk about some more interesting things happening in our community. Don't go away.